What's up, my buttercups? Hola, bandidos. Welcome to Mel's Magic. Episode, what are we at? 14, 14, yeah. And today is 8th of December. Madre mía, tiempo vuela. I hope you're good. I'm good. I still got this like lingering cold, but getting better. I've been popping a lot of like vitamin C. Yesterday, my friend came over and gave me this high dose dosage. 100 milligram vitamin C liquid gold and I'm like yeah bring it on apparently you can't OD on vitamin C so yeah it's one way of tr trying to get rid of this virus <clears throat> and I'm flushing it out with lots of um, doses of my brew home brew it's a mixture of some local herbs but sage from the garden sage is super good with freshly pressed hun freshly pressed lemon and honey. So I've been sipping that stuff like liters and liters of it, flushing out this virus. And for the rest, yeah, I'm still able to do my walks in the morning. You all know that's part of my routine. It just makes me happy, you know, like you end up with this super energized brain. And I also want you to give, I want to give you the best of my energy, you know, um, and give you, <laughs> Give you some of my Insta poetry sometimes. Well, Mel's poetry is a bit like instant coffee, you know. It's not the finest of the brew, but it keeps you going. And it has a kick to it, so it's a bit like instant coffee. <laughs> Ay madre. Um, you know, sometimes I think it's funny because I used to be like a really serious person. Like really, you know, look everything, make everything kind of hard for myself, like extra hard. I have a friend, I remember she, she told me once, Mel, if you were to do a PhD, you got a PhD on making things hard for yourself. It's como ese pensamiento. The harder things are, the or, or, or like this, this ground belief that life has to be hard, you know, that you have to suffer your way through. That was literally one of my core beliefs before. I'm, I'm flipping that big time nowadays. But... um. Yeah, so I'm kind of surprised at myself that I'm bringing out this comical side. And I think it's from my dad, actually, my real dad. He was, he was quite a... He was one of these guys. I mean, yeah, he was pretty crazy. But he would crack these jokes and where, you know, it takes some time to process. And you wouldn't even understand what the joke is really about. But the fact that he laughs so loud, he had this, like, tremendous wall-shaking laugh that you just have to like laugh with him, you know, it was so infectious. So in any case, I thought about this morning on my walk and I was like, maybe, you know, I'm channeling this part of myself, like my late father. <laughs> and I had a word with him. I'm like, hey, Papa, let's, um, let's run the show here. <laughs> so it was a kind of nice, nice feeling to be connected with him still. And what have I got for you guys from my morning, my relics from my morning walk? Well, one of them was this, uh, Karakol, Schneckenhaus of Deutsch, a uh, snail house. And I looked in and I thought, it's kind of cool. Kind of represents a little bit what I'm doing with this channel, you know, steady and slow. I mean, I have no idea who's watching this any anyway, so it's kind of a, <laughs> it's almost like a, uh, public confession here yeah anyway so that is nice nice net metaphor steady and slow is my motto instead of like burning out yeah and then I it reminded me of this other um, this other thing which also has object which also has a spiral in it can you see it this one is actually quite special can you see the spiral pattern it's quite special because I found this little leaf on a day where my mom was away. I was in the house for the first time on my own, you know, after a long time. It was really nice to have the place to myself. And I was working through some difficult feelings. And, you know, at some point I was just, I guess, sad, you know, thinking about um, both of my fathers who had passed away in 2000. 19 pretty much like within three months 2019 and I just yeah I just missed my dad and then 
you know, somebody told me, Mel, you can just reconnect with um, your ancestors or, you know, anyone, any loved one who passed away. You can still connect with them on an energetic level. And I thought, well, I miss Tatai. Tatai was my stepfather's name. So I've got two dads, biological dad, the, the funny, crazy one, loud one, and Tatai, who's like my stepdad, who I grew up with. So I also miss Tatai. I have a portrait here of him. Maybe I'll show you later. And I thought about this um, notion of, oh, maybe I can, you know, I can still connect with him. And I thought, well, it'd be nice if you give me some kind of sign, you know, especially today because I'm feeling sad. And um, honestly, like, I went outside. I was about to step into the car. And just before the, you know, I was about to open the door. And I looked down and I found this tiny little leaf with this beautiful pattern on it. And I was like, and I picked it up. I'm like, wow. It's curious, no? Que tenga esa espiral to have this spiral on there, and you know, um, universe. There's like universal patterns, hence the symmetry of the snail, no? The the spiral is a universal one of the universal patterns, and I just thought, I'll take that as a sign, you know. We are all we're all on this spiral of evolution, and kind of maybe reminding us of the circle of life. So I'm like. I'll take that as a sign, <laughs> you know, thank you. <laughs> Which brings me to a point, you know, um, I've been experiencing all these crazy, call it synchronicities or signs or messages, but I know that I'm perceiving them because I'm opening myself up to them. You know, as you know from previous episodes, I consciously try and put on the magic male glasses and I, I try to be open to the environment and look at things with fresh eyes, look at people with fresh eyes, objects, animals with fresh eyes. And um, honestly, I kid you not, I pick up on, I just get these messages all the time, whether it's in cloud formations or natural phenomena or just stuff that happens to me on my walk. So um, it's exciting. It's a bit like, it makes me feel like life is an adventure again, you know? Um, I used to fear life a lot. I I was really, really stuck in this notion of life is dangerous and people out there are out there to, to get you kind of thing. And and I felt it because I, as I mentioned, I think one of my previous episodes, I used to have this lump in my shoulder, which was an accumulation of tension, tensioning against life you know it's kind of almost like a protective armor like your muscles tense up you know when you're scared and you're tense and um much of my physical symptoms actually which have now vanished um th they vanished as soon as i started to relax more and trust more and open myself up to life and just believe that life is not against me you know the universe loves us the universe wants the best for us, we just need to trust. And I know it's easy to say, you know, oh, you just trust. I mean, it's probably one of the hardest things, you know, to, to, to trust something or someone or life. That's huge. But I notice that every time I take a step towards trust or towards the universe in trust, in good faith, the universe reflects it back to me. It's almost like, hey, well done, Melanie. You're on the right path, you know, and some kind of synchronicity appears like um, in the episode of uh, meeting joy and love, those two people like appearing, manifesting right in front of me at the cafe. It was pretty insane. So yeah, opening yourself up to magic, seeing life as an adventure, you know, the fact that we can step out of our old patterns and conditioning, like lay off these armors of resistance, which in the end keep us separate from the bounty of life, keep us separate often from love. Um, it's an act of courage, I must admit. But um, yeah, we need to find that courage within ourselves. We really, really do. You know, one thing, I, oh, oh, I wanted to show you this. Kennt, kennt ihr das? Ihr Deutschen? Of Deutsch, of German. Uh, die unendliche Geschichte. The Never Ending Story from Michael Ende. I picked this up recently. I mean, it's definitely like my top notch favorite book 
children's book when I was a kid, apart from Gebrüder Grimm, but they were pretty like dark, but uh, good. But this one is um, just a sheer fantasy that you get involved in. And, and, and the notion that, um, I don't know if you know the story, but it's basically this Bastian, this kid who starts reading in the book, The Never Ending Story, he finds the book and starts reading the book. And then he realizes along the way that he, Bastian, like the real kid, is being called to help um, Adreo, which is the hero in the story, to help Adreo fight the big nothing and save this land called Fantasia. So Bastian is like, imagine like you're, he's reading the book and at some point the Adreo like calls out to him like, Bastian, you are the hero. We need you. Come on, you know. And it's, it's kind of like a mirroring effect because here's you reading the story. And you're like, wait a minute. At some point, it's as if the book is calling you. It's like shaking you, a bit like Neo in the Matrix, like, wake up, you know. You are the hero. You are the one. You are the chosen one. And, um, yeah, this call to action of take, of having courage, of being the author of your story, of, of waking up and realizing you are the creator. You are the creator of your own reality. You're co-creating with the universe. I mean, it's like, boom, huge. And bust, the thing with the story also is um, I find kind of fascinating, if that's the right word, is that this big nothing, the big nothing is basically, as the word says, the big nothing is like nothing, the death of imagination, of, of creation, basically. It's, for me, it's played out in the real world here right now is by this homogenization of culture, of everyone trying to copy someone else, of, of you know, few people being really authentic, few people recognizing that, you know, we have the power to create you know, what, and whether you realize it or not, you are creating because even if you're unconscious, you are creating your unconscious reality. So if you're like in a fear mind, you are creating more fear, more war, more destruction. Um, oh, damn, I lost my thought. Oh, yeah, it's called to action, not to be courageous and to be the author of your own story. And what's happening in here that almost the big nothing, this homogenizing, let's say, self-destructive machine which we see being played out in the world right now no so you'll see is almost it almost succeeds at destroying all of fantasia there's this moon princess in the story who calls out on bastian you know and they're just like bastian come on you know i think adrio had already passed away in the story it was so sad but she was like come on what are you waiting for seriously to the point where this boy, Bastian, he, 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 he is in limbo and indecisive for such a long time that Fantasia goes like, is derumbado, is being eaten up by the big nothing. Until like the last split moment, Bastian appears inside of the story itself, together with the moon princess in her crumbling tower, beautiful like mar marble tower. And he said something like, I'm sorry, I, I'm sorry I came so late, you know, I'm sorry I hesitated, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, is it too late? And she said something like, you know, come closer, come closer. And she was holding something in her hands and she slowly opened it and you couldn't really see what it was inside, but there was like a little light and he op she opened it and she showed it to him. And um, in it was this little sand core, and, and he's like, Bastian's like, well, what's that? And he, she was like, well, this is all that's left of Fantasia, one grain of sand. But from this, you can recreate everything again. Isn't that beautiful? So you're kind of, you know, in the end, you think, oh my God, you know, he literally allowed all of Fantasia to go to ruins because he wasn't fast enough to intervene. No? However, worlds and galaxies can be recreated from this one grain of sand. Now it's this quote, no, that universe is um, encapsulated in every grain of sand. 
It's almost like fractal reality, no? Everything is contains the whole and is part of the whole, just like we are. And um, yeah, that's why this this story is just magnificent. Whether I think you're a kid or not, I mean this this myth or the story of hope, really, that we can we are part of the creation, not only part of creation, but we are co-creators of the universe. And if you really look around, you know, everything around you, you have manifested in a way, like you made decisions and, and or your, your thoughts and your beliefs and your actions made those things appear into your life. I mean, look at, look at Owl, found him at the market, but I could have like chosen not to get him, but I got him. He's my guardian. Hmm? Or the paintings around me. I mean, that one's of my good friend Tosha, but that one is mine. Oh, it's all mirror reversed. Bueno. And those, in fact, I mean, you know, they, not only artists are creators, everyone is a creator. Think about it. And I feel like the, the biggest, one of the biggest malaise nowadays is this, we've disempowered our own um, creative powers. You know, we don't believe that we're creators or we don't use our creativity in the right way. And it's part of the problem out there, honestly, because we humans are born creators. We are, you know? And if we don't use it correctly, we get sick. We get psychologically sick because our soul is sick. You know, our soul wants to express itself. And if we don't express ourselves, the energy doesn't go, doesn't just disappear. You know, the energy to create doesn't just disappear. It kind of goes against you. There's this notion that me lo dijo alguien. Some somebody told me once, um, you know, a let's say a definition of sin would be not to use your God-given gifts. Let's say in my uh, in my in my life, for example, not to create art, not to paint, not to do this. It would be a sin, and I would hurt myself. You know. And that energy would go against me. It kind of destroys me from the inside. I, I used to do that. I used to resist, have a lot of resistance. And in the end, that kind of creative energy went against me. It's like Thanatos no? versus Eros. So I guess, <laughs> well, that's long-winded. But I guess um, my message is over and over again, you know, try and open yourself. Try to stop the mental chatter. Try and take a break. Try and... Go out in nature, reconnect with nature. I mean, she's just waiting, you know, to, to show you her bounty and just the, all the miracles of nature, you know, and how things harmonize up there in nature. Try and open yourself to magic again, you know? Small things. Small things are just waiting there, waiting there for you to perceive them. And um, if you don't know this story, I, I encourage you, to look it up and maybe read it. It's a big, big Schinken, Großer Schinken, we would say. Um, but it's worth it, you know. We need all these reminders to remind ourselves that we are co-creators, very, very powerful co-creators of our reality. And we can create magic. Yeah? Vale? <laughs> okay, and in this note, there was a long riff. I wish you a wonderful... ¿Qué día estamos? Miércoles, Mittwoch, Mercredi, and I'll see you tomorrow for another episode of Mel's Magic. And you like my scarf, isn't it super cool? It was a gift from a friend. <laughs> okay, hasta luego. Ciao.